Hey y'all, what's up? Welcome back to Super Geeked. I'm here with another thrift haul of women's fashion. This one was a quick thrifting trip in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I drove over there for a doctor's appointment with my grandparents and I dropped them off at the cancer center and beelined it straight to Goodwill. <laughs> So all of these are from a Baton Rouge thrift store. If you recall in a previous video or a couple videos, I've mentioned that I have a partnership with Goodwill of Southeastern Louisiana. And this year I'm trying to hit every single thrift store in their region, which is a lot of them. So I took the opportunity since I was already in Baton Rouge to hit up a local thrift store. This thrift haul had a limited time limit because I had, it was a checkup. It wasn't going to take very long. And I knew I would have less than an hour to hit that thrift store. And I was right. I had 45 minutes in that store. So you're going to find out with me, was it a good thrift trip or an epic fail? So if you didn't know already, I am a full-time reseller. This is what I do to make money, to contribute to my household. And I sell mostly fashion, but I also sell antiques and mid-century hard goods because it's what I know, because it's what I love. <laughs> so today I'm going to share with you these items that I got in Baton Rouge. However, I have not looked up comps on them. I did not look up comps in the thrift store and I have not looked up comps yet. So I'm going to show you the haul, tell you why I picked it up and we're going to see if I did a good job. I don't recommend this if you're a new reseller because it does take time to learn brands, but also to learn what they sell for, for on the resale market. Just because something retailed for a lot of money does not mean it's gonna resell for a lot. So that's important and that is a step that we're skipping today because I have been reselling fashion for a while and this is a 100% fashion haul, so all women's clothing, but if you're new, I started just like you. So I started where every single item that went in my basket at the thrift store, I had to look up and check comps. Now, not so much. I do still look up comps, but if I find a new brand or find an item that I don't have experience with, even if it's a brand I've heard other people talk about, I will look up the comps. However, I have been reselling clothing for enough time now that I know what I can get for an item based on history. And so because of that, sometimes I don't look up comps. However, this entire trip, I didn't look up anything because I knew I had such a limited amount of time that I figured let's go with our gut. So let's see if it paid off. Okay, this first dress brand, I've sold lots of dresses. I have not sold one like this before though. This is a little tiered dress. It's sparkly and it has stars all over it. So that was the first thing it had going for it is it was just a fun dress. And with the stars, there's a lot of people into that sort of celestial, celestial stars and moons and suns and stuff like that. So I thought it was cute. It'd be a great party dress, a great going out dress. It's very flouncy. It has this overlayering effect, really cute. And these cute tie shoulders. So the brand is a brand I've sold a lot and it's Lulu's. The only style of Lulu's dress that I veer away from are these skater style dresses, the really short mini dresses that flare out. Um, this one was fun and I feel like a comps on this are gonna be worth it. And also let me tell you, my average cost of goods for the shopping trip was $7.49. That's a little higher than average for me, but still not bad, uh, especially because this is very dress heavy. Based on what I generally pay for items, I like my average sale price to be around the $53 mark is where I seem to hover a lot. Um, and that's based on what I expect from my return on investment. Hopefully that's not too much information <laughs> overload, but this next dress, okay, so this is a black little mini dress and you can see right away it is leather, super soft. So the brand is IRO. I knew this was a mid-tier designer. I have never picked this brand up at the thrift store, but it's leather. So I looked in here at the material tag and it says 100% lamb leather um, and it may be an older style but with it being lamb's leather it's a mini dress it's a little black dress uh, I thought it was a safe bet 
This dress brand sits for me for a little bit, but I loved the style of this dress. A-line, it's got the double strapping, so it goes over the shoulder and then on the shoulder. It's got a nice V in the back, but this print is super cute. The tailoring is wonderful with the pleating and then, and then the exposed zipper in the back. So this is the brand. So another mid-tier designer, it's Plenty by Tracy Reese, but the most exciting thing it had going for it was it was new with tags. This originally retailed for $198. So again, pretty safe bet to me. Another brand that's hit or miss is For Love and Lemons. But look how cute this is. Look at those bell sleeves. My girl Alicia loves a good bell sleeve. This one is a tiered bell sleeve. Sheer panel in the middle with this embroidery and the and a crocheted cutout all the way around the garment really cute it is a romper and the whole thing is fully lined a cute little ruffle peplum right here um just a sweet little romper from for love and lemon so that's why i picked this piece up hopefully we're doing good so far let me take these little thingies off right here so it's easier to show it to you Y'all be sure to let me know down below how I did. I, I'm sort of gonna know anyway, cause I have to add comps to this video, but I'm just curious to hear what you think and how you think I did. So this is a pretty dress. It's got like a ponty knit top with short sleeves and this drapey front. The sleeves do uh, sit a little bit off the shoulders. Beautiful metallic geometric print skirt. It has an exposed rose gold zipper in the back. So that's interesting too. Very pretty. And I don't find this brand a whole lot. Now, again, this is a brand that retails for a lot, but resale is kind of all over the place. This is Ted Baker. I've sold Ted Baker dresses for over $100 and I've so sold Ted Baker dresses close to 50. So excited to see what this Ted Baker sells for. Oh, I was so excited about these. So, pair of jeans, y'all. These things are super soft, super, super soft. They are factory distress, factory faded, factory whiskering. <laughs> factory just means it was all done on purpose. Uh, it's not faded from wear. You can see by the M. I'm guess you can, I guess you can guess that these are mother jeans. No brainer that I was gonna pick these up for $7 and change. Super excited to find these. These are in a size 28, so good size too. Happy about those. Ooh, and I like this a lot. So and this has a crocheted top with some cutouts here. Pretty little sleeve with a little ruffle on there that is sheer. And this is a romper. So it is a cropped length, wide leg, very on trend. It does have pockets, which we love. Hidden back zipper. This could be worn out on a date or hanging out with the girls or as a wedding guest. So we love a good versatile piece. Let's unzip it so I can show you the brand. This is not a brand that I ever really pick up, but it is Chelsea 28, which is a brand carried at Nordstrom. So here's the deal. Normally, like I said, this wouldn't be a brand that I gravitated towards. Uh, you know, they're, they're a nice brand. They have nice pieces, but because of the style of this and how cute it is and how versatile it is, I definitely thought it was a sure bet that I'd be able to make close to that $50, $53 mark. So I grabbed it. All right, another piece, uh, another brand that I'm pretty picky with is ASOS. Now you can see it is new with tags, so of course that had it going for it, but it is an evening dress. Now some of these brands like ASOS have more expensive line because they do some formal wear. This is a scuba material, which is this really thick sort of flexible, um, material. It does have, it is a pencil skirt dress and what I like too is it does have a, there's a back slit, there is a bow on the back, there's a hidden zipper, but what's really fun is that it has a one shoulder look 
It is a wrap in the front. It goes over the arm on one side and on top of the shoulder draped over the arm on the other. Also, it is plus size and that is a size 16. Some people wouldn't consider 16 a plus size, but technically it is plus size. So yeah, that is why I got that dress. All right, last dress. <laughs> so this was actually the first piece I found when I went in. I take this back. This is the second piece I found because I went through blazers first when I got there. Uh, but it is a little cover-up dress. Great for spring and summer. Check out that beading detail. And the brand is Sundance. Sundance is a catalog brand. Don't ever use their stock photos because you will get your you will get a Vero on eBay and Poshmark and Mercari can remove your listings. So I wouldn't risk it. I know stock photos is controversial, but just a tip, if you are newer and are using stock photos, I wouldn't use Sundance because you're risking. The sleeves also have the embroidery. It is semi sheer. So Sundance is a great brand, does really well. This may not bring as much as some of the other pieces, but I figured it was still a good pickup, um, especially with the style and with the brand. All right, last piece is a brand I've never picked up before, so this is gonna be a big old question mark. So it is called Something Navy, but you can tell this is a very high quality blazer. It is a long length, two button closure, front pockets that could be usable. So they have the stitching you can take out if you do like to use those. And uh, the reason I got this is number one, I've heard of the brand before, even though I've never found it. It's made in Indonesia. It, it is lined, but the fabric in the interior feels almost like a silk, even though it's not. Um, but then also the tailoring, see these vents in the back? Um, you can tell that this is a quality piece because of the way the tailoring is. It's just a very nice quality blazer. So I thought, let's try it. Never sold it. Um, and also it's long enough that if you're a petite, you would be, you could wear it as a dress, which is very popular to wear these blazers um, as a dress. So I grabbed it to see, I take it back one more item. This is a sweater dress, just a plain old gray sweater dress. It does have a uh, ballooning at the bottom of the sleeves. It has ribbing here. It has a turtleneck sort of look, but I felt the fabric. And as you resell more with clothing, you learn to feel for quality fabrics. Now, some synthetic fabrics can trick you. I figured this was some kind of blend because I can feel the wool. I can feel that it has wool and I can also tell that it has some sort of other blend, whether cashmere or angora. So we're gonna look down here in the material tag. This dress is 56% nylon, 30% merino wool, 10% al alpaca, and 4% elastane, which is for the stretch. So, um, and here is the material tag. Okay, so we know the material is good. Basic sweater dress, but what else do we have going for us? It's a brand I actually really like to sell that's more bread and butter, and that is J. Crew. However, oh, look at that. Surprise, new with tags. So for me, the materials on this, even with a basic sweater dress, the brand, knowing that I have experience with J. Crew and J. Crew can do really well with certain items and it being new with tags, it was a yes. So that's my really quick thrift haul. What do you guys think? Did I do okay? Again, I don't want to discourage anybody. I know it's hard in the beginning when you become a reseller having to look up every single comp, but y'all, we all do it. We all go through it. And eventually you learn, you pick up things from watching other resellers YouTube channels by following them on Instagram or just being out there and having experience, trying things out, picking them up, seeing what they do on the resale market. The market is always up and down. So just because something doesn't resell really well this year doesn't mean next year it won't. So you just kind of have to be on top of your game. But whether you're out there selling electronics, pots and pans, fashion, whatever, comps are definitely your friend. But it's nice to know that every once in a while, if you have to hit the thrift store really quick, that you're comfortable enough in what you know and what you've learned from being a reseller that you don't have to always look up comps. <laughs> so 
Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Definitely let me know in the comments what you thought. If you think it's pretty scary that I went in there and just picked a bunch of stuff without looking it up. And if you ever do that yourself. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye y'all.